Uh, welcome everyone, my name is Julie Holmes presenting from the CQ Uni Careers team. Um, our webinar today, Help, I Need to be Employable. Uh, so this forms our fifth webinar of our five part Careers Help webinar series. So what makes you different from someone else with the same piece of paper or the same qualification? And that's a helpful question to consider as you think about your employability and prepare for graduate employment. And it's one that we're going to be exploring today. We're hearing time and again that employers are looking for well-rounded, um, dynamic, multi-skilled candidates. So being able to recognise and articulate your value position is extremely important. So what is employability? Well, it's not necessarily about getting a job, although this can form part of it. Your career is much broader than this, particularly in this world of disruptive technologies uh, with this rapid change and in innovation and enterprise, our ideas of traditional work um, and, or a job is changing. So it's much more dynamic than simply being job ready. It's about enablement, being ready, knowing you can evidence your capabilities, building on your capabilities, recognising your gaps, um, and knowing what your next step will be in your career learning journey. Increasingly and overwhelmingly time and again, we hear feedback from employers that they look far beyond um, and deeply into the attributes um, of, of students, far beyond just the qualification or the GPA. While both are important, um, they look beyond these levels. They're interested in a broad range of skill sets um, and soft skills, not just the technical skills linked to a particular industry, are of interest to them. And so considering your employability within uh, your life holistically is imperative. So graduate employability combines two essential elements. The first, your core or theoretical base um, of expertise within the discipline um, that you're studying. The second element are your high level interpersonal skills, the softer skills um, within our global um, within our global marketplace that are valued, like problem solving, um, uh, creativity, innovation, um, the ability to work well within diverse teams. So a helpful way to think about this is to use the T-shape concept um, used in recruitment to describe someone's abilities. So the vertical bar uh, representing someone's core specialisation, so your discipline area or your specialisation of study. And the horizontal bar is someone's ability to apply a broad set of skills, your cross-curricular uh, skills and experiences, so your non-degree related skills. Employers increasing, increasingly want to recruit um, agile professionals, specialised generalists, um, as they tend to be more flexible and resilient, and they can work across disciplines. It's the combination of both the hard, the hard and the soft skills that enable us to grow our employability skills. And so that's great news for the Renaissance folk amongst us. With graduate employee um, recruitment so competitive, often decisions between shortlisted candidates are based on very small margins. With baseline qualifications and technical skills between graduates around the country, often you know, virtually identical in many cases. So how do you stand out in such a competitive graduate market? The theory of marginal gains can be really a really handy way to look at it. So this concept is more often applied um, within the professional sporting arena, where talent between world-class athletes can be really closely matched, where difference in performance can come down to literally a fraction of a second. And so coaches search for creative ways that they can make small 1% gains. 
like the Sky Team in 2012 Tour de France race. They looked at all the usual areas like diet and their regular training program. And then they took, looked at um, other creative ways to make small 1% gains, like having all support crew use hand sanitizer to avoid germs, spreading germs. And then they delivered comfortable mattresses for each rider at every hotel because often the local hotels had uncomfortable mattresses. So you can imagine the improved sleep quality these riders had. The small differences over time added up to significant improved performance and a recipe for success. And the same applies to your employability. Small gains in a range of areas can lead to vastly improved outcomes. The comforting thought or the nice thing is that informal learning is very accessible to all of us. There's lots of ways we can do this. The possibilities are virtually endless. So taking a, a a do-it-yourself um, approach to informal learning um, is very doable. So here are five areas that you might like to consider to help you along the way. Firstly, determining your career direction is really super important. It allows you to proactively target career opportunities um, that are congruent or complement your personal career focus. Understanding your strengths, your values, your interests and key skills. Um, is it's really important and you'll find a range of activities and resources and career hub to help you with your career development um, and in particular plan your career and the careers toolkit is a great place to start developing your job search skills learning how to articulate your value and what you have to offer is extremely important and we cover this in help i need a job um, webinar um, within the careers help um, series. You'll also find um, a range of resources under the quick link section in Career Hub. Building your technical skills. Consider being mentored by industry professionals. Participate in a career alumni, alumni, I'm sorry, mentoring program and other career and employment events. Um, build your network. Get involved with industry competitions and events. Um, link in with relevant professional bodies, maybe develop your expertise and knowledge through wider reading, looking at industry forums and social media. Check out um, a range of business etiquette, professional develop and professional communication resources in the career, careers toolkit. Learn about reputation building and building your track record within the workplace um, and interacting with professionals effectively. And get involved at uni. Visit the student portal for information on student clubs and societies, student life committees, sporting teams. Um, volunteer to um, mentor other students. You could even start your own club or society. Travel is also valued by employers, so consider an international exchange. Experience living, traveling, and working in different cultures. Um, so global mobility skills are highly valued in the job marketplace. And last, but certainly not least, your self-development. Um, take on a social experiment and aim to step out of your comfort zone regularly and step into your courage zone. Learn new things. Um, seek out a variety of opportunities and experiences to build your self-development. So uh, don't run yourself silly worrying about filling your day with endless activity. We're all very time poor. So first recognise and identify and record what you're already doing. You'll be surprised. You don't, um, didn't arrive uh, at university with an empty bucket. Um, you'll already be bringing a range of experiences and skill sets to the table that relate to non-degree, sorry, related activity. Think about things like sporting activities, music activities, community events and involvement. The, um, the possibilities are endless. Every little bit helps. 
So think of it as building up your bank of evidence uh, with every experience and opportunity to gain exposure to a range of skill sets and another deposit into your bank of evidence that you can draw upon as needed. So each transaction or intentional activity becomes an investment into your future, making your future transactions or transitions much easier to undertake, um, having a resource bank of experience to draw upon for a range, from a range of contexts. And continue this practice into the future um, within your new profession or field. Um, it's good practice to keep track of your development, taking control of your career management by reviewing your experience regularly. It's recommended to review and update your resume every six months to keep track of your new skill development and learnings. And you'll be surprised how much you do in that time with exposure to new functions, responsibilities, projects, uh, learning how to utilise new equipment, software, technology um, and professional development done along the way. You're also, um, you're also likely to undertake formal performance reviews within many positions. So make a habit of integrating a reflective practice into your career development routine. So how well are you traveling right now with your current employability level? Find out your current employability rating using the Little Farm Employability Game app or by completing the employability assessment that you're um, you'll find under the employability section, resource section, and career hub. Reflecting on your current level is a good place to start, and then you can plan how best to increase your rating. Start early, like preparation for a sporting event. Don't leave your training until the last minute. It doesn't do you any favours. Like a professional um, athlete, building um, and regular training into your routine is really important. So seek out opportunities to regularly uh, flex your employability muscle. And consider the 24-7-1 approach to action planning. It's a simple model for continuing your progress because sometimes it feels like facing a giant mountain. It's a little method um, to taking action planning in bite-sized steps. So aim to complete your first action within 24 hours, just um, one positive step in the right direction. And then take another action within seven days, and then aim to complete another action in one month's time. It's a kind and simple approach to action management. Building up your bank of experience is important, as is learning how to articulate your skill sets to prospective employers. So building your job search skills um, is an important aspect of increasing your employability. Take a look at the STAR technique in particular and how to write achievement statements in the Help I Want a Job webinar. This touches on how to develop your job search skills and present yourself as a competitive applicant within the job search process. Well, we can't gaze into a crystal ball to know what the future holds. Um, but it's interesting to learn that the way some graduate employers recruit right now is evolving. Instead of focusing on past behaviour, we're seeing some organisations are interested in measuring future potential. So they're developing cutting edge technology and systems to help do this, looking at various attributes like digital IQ levels or learning agility, um, the likelihood that an applicant will take risks, um, how someone deals with distraction and problem solving using uh, tools like gamification and predictive analysis to measure these. So it's more vital than ever to be finding new ways or ways to constantly develop, stretch and challenge ourselves in a range of contexts to build our um, various and variety of skills 
a range of skills in a variety of ways. The Institute for Future for the Future developed a, an interesting report listing ten um, key skills for the future workforce, um, looking at the next ten years. Um, with their forecasting. And this is what they came up with, which was quite an interesting list. Um, critical and deeper thinking, um, social intelligence, the ability to connect with others on a deeper um, level, novel and adaptive thinking, so how to deal with unique problems, um, cross-cultural competency features, com computational thinking, new media literacy, um, transdisciplinary, so multifaceted um, or the ability to converse between disciplines um, was listed as important. Cognitive load management, so the ability to work with large um, data to, and utilise and analyse it. Um, and virtual collaboration as well. So as a final note, take a balanced approach. Um, don't put all your effort and energy just into your studies. Put your best foot forward into your studies, but do allow some time um, to um, divide or, or spend some energy and focus and effort into other areas as well, and building your capacity beyond just your academic field. Um, Include time for building other activities into your routine while studying because variety is really important. Uh, look for ways to build small gains. Don't underestimate the value of different experiences um, and keep track of these and learn how to articulate these to prospective employers. Take opportunities for informal learning. Step out of your comfort zone. Milk your university experience for all it's worth and, and seek out new opportunities. Take full advantage of the resources and the opportunities that are available to you and be proactive. Um, as we hear some recruiters put it, consider the aeroplane test. Um, would you pass the aeroplane test? Would I want to sit with you uh, or beside you for five hours straight on a flight? Are you nice to talk to? Um, do you read nonverbal cues well? Recruiters are very interested in your life and your own personal skills as well. And the final um, note is about your career management, um, the making of your career, not the taking of your career. So a little list of resources as a first go-to um, that you could uh, look out for on Career Hub. Primarily in the Careers Toolkit, you'll find a whole range, a whole stack of um, resources, including the Elevator Pitch Generator, which is really helpful in articulating um, your um, career focus in a concise, um, catchy um, sentence. There's a range of um, resources around um, thinking about what to do in the workplace for starting in a new job, um, employer videos, um, information on business and professional etiquette. Um, there's also a whole range of online, uh, sorry, quick link um, resources um, around part-time and casual job search, volunteering, um, graduate websites, LinkedIn, um, help sheets. Um, you'll find a, a whole range, a whole gamut of resources there. And these are our contact details here. So you'll find our email. You can follow us on you, crew, um, and certainly jump into Career Hub. I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat to see if we have any questions. Um, there's one comment here around, I never really got involved in many extracurricular activities. Is there any way I can compensate for this? Uh, well, it's never too late to start. So that's the good news. And the first step is recognising that there's value in pursuing um, activities and experiences beyond your academic area. And time, um, we're all very, very time poor and it's um, difficult to fit everything in. So try and build on that 
um, slowly and just integration and build in um, maybe one or maybe a couple of different activities into your routine. Um, so starting at any point, you know, it's not never too late to start um, and I encourage, encourage you to think about some possibilities there um, that will allow you to expand and stretch yourself. Um, so that's a good question. Thank you for that. Can you review this later? Um, you'll be able to review more than the PowerPoint. Um, I will upload this as a video link into our Career Hub resources. So you can have a look at the video um, resources section um, under the resources tab, look up videos, and we'll be loading those up shortly for our entire series. There's quite a lot of information in all of them, so you might find it quite helpful to revisit um, along the way. Thanks for that question. Are there any other questions out there in Cyberland? Any burning questions, comments, thoughts? The, I guess the key message here is think about um, taking a balanced approach um, to your career development and management um, and try not to be too narrow in, in the way that you put your energy and efforts um, in that area. Um, it's around capacity building and every experience that you have um, and part of that is reviewing what you already have done because there will be things um, that you've already started to undertake and looking at the value of those areas and start um, recording these in a place that you can refer back to um, when you're completing your applications. If you can give um, evidence your skills and anchor them to a particular context and use a range of contexts within your application process, um, that will help the prospective employer recognise that you're a dynamic person and you have a range of experiences that you'll be bringing to the table. So um, it's good for your own uh, career development just to be tracking and, and be mindful um, of this aspect to your career planning as you go forward. Um, and it's a really important learning around employability and learning skills to develop that as you go. Thank you everyone. Uh, we will be finishing shortly. This is a shorter webinar today, but more food for thought as you go forward um, and forge ahead. You can always fire an email off to uh, careers at cq.edu if you do have any further burning questions or you can organise to book an appointment on Career Hub um, if you'd like to discuss your case um, specifically. Um, you're able to do that with a careers counsellor. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I uh, look forward to seeing you at our future career events and webinars. Bye everyone.